incredibly spooky World War II control tower haunted by airmen. Welcome to Fact Feast. Feast your eyes on the darker side. Subscribe, like, and share. Wartime airfields were witness to much emotion and fear for airmen related to missions yet to come over Germany and the inevitable tragedy of the returning injured or casualties. RAF Bury St. Edmunds, now known as Rotham Airfield, also witnessed disaster, and it is perhaps no coincidence that there are tales of hauntings and ghostly apparitions of lost airmen centering on its control tower. Fact Feast takes a look at the creepy reports of supernatural happenings, so you can decide for yourself if there is any truth to the spooky accounts. Rotham Airfield is located east of the town of Bury St. Edmunds, constructed from 1941 to 1942 for the United States 8 Air Force. The airfield is now in private ownership, much reduced in size, but still active for civil light aircraft flights on two grass runways. Its wartime layout comprised of three intersecting concrete runways, with the main runway on a roughly east-west axis. The airfield also comprised 50 hard stands, hangars, technical buildings, and accommodation for 3,000 staff in Nissan-type buildings around the village of Rotham. It served as a base for various light, medium, and heavy bombardment squadrons, initially Douglas A-20 Havocs, and then Martin B-62B and C Marauders, which completed the airfield's first operation with an attack on an electrical engineering plant on 14th of May, 1943. The second mission on 17th of May was a disaster as no planes returned, and the third mission of 29th of May witnessed a catastrophe when a B-26 crashed on the airfield, killing the crew, damaging a hangar, and inflicting a severe demoralizing impact on group morale. On 15th of June, 1943, the 94th Bombardment Group began operations at the airfield with the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress and strategic campaigns against key industrial targets, resulting in a number of successes and citations awarded from key battles at the end of the war, including D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge. With 300 missions, despite successes, there have been crashes, accidents, injuries, and loss of life. The airfield was returned to the Royal Air Force in 1945 after the war, closed in 1948, and left unused for several months. The concrete runways and hard stands being broken up and returned to agriculture. Some hangars and attendant buildings were still used for industry. The control tower, however, was occupied as a private dwelling for many years before being abandoned in 1988. In the 1990s, it was restored to its present use as an aviation museum, preserving history by telling the story of its wartime function. There are a number of stories of hauntings resulting from the airfield's turbulent history. One such tale is of an airman named Lil Butch, who was shot down during a raid over Germany in 1945 and whose apparition was witnessed by his comrades wandering around the base not long after his death as if he had just returned from the mission and hadn't died at all. Of course, with emotions running high with his fellow crew after such a tragic event, 
you might wonder if a snatched glimpse of one of the numerous airmen in similar uniforms at the base could be mistaken for him. But that's for you to decide. Lil Butch doesn't seem to be the only serviceman seen wandering around the airfield after losing their life. So much hauntings, if you believe them, aren't isolated to one incident. During the 1970s, many events couldn't be attributed to any source and remain unexplained, perhaps supernatural. Sounds of phantom aircraft taking off were heard, although you might think this could have been a civil aircraft mistaken for one of the heavy aircraft from the war. That said, there should be a noticeable difference between the sound of a light and heavy aircraft taking off. And the noise of a light aircraft would be more localized. If we look to other sources, there are industrial buildings nearby, but surely machinery here couldn't reproduce the distinctive mechanical and aerodynamic noise of rotations from a propeller engine as it rises into the sky, could it? Although those who claim to have heard these propeller-like noises have checked the sky to find it free of aircraft. It's not obvious that anybody has been able to record what they heard. So it remains a mystery. In the control tower itself, people have witnessed faint but audible sounds of transmissions and scraps of conversations. Perhaps the most disturbing is that of a pilot who crashed his plane after running out of fuel while waiting to land. He is heard to cry out, Why wouldn't you let us land? It's similarly hard to rule out interference from other sources, but it would be easier to accept such reports if we know that no other electrical equipment was present, albeit the fizz of static from radio transmissions are normally distinguishable from other noise mediums. And if you believe the seemingly haunting words of the desperate airman were heard and set aside the possibility of misinterpretation of noises or a vivid imagination, then you may agree that this is unexplainable. You might also believe that it's difficult to explain that the tannoy has apparently been heard, but later checked and seem to be disconnected. Given the ghostly activity said to have been experienced at the airfield, it is no surprise that the control tower and its attendant buildings have become a modern-day focus for paranormal investigation, using an array of modern electrical equipment, such as infrared and electromagnetic energy sensors, alongside Ouija boards, and standard methods such as spirit box, radio frequency scanning, and dousing rods. Unexplained phenomena attributed to the supernatural include mysterious smells of oil and perfume, strange lights, as well as a glimpse of feet and even the figure of a stocky man with slicked black hair have been seen on the ground floor. Whilst upstairs, visitors have experienced a strong smell of tobacco. It is worth noting that the museum and Nissan huts display aircraft instruments and parts recovered from crash sites in Suffolk and Norfolk. And there may be residual impressions of these traumatic crashes associated with them that have manifested in seemingly paranormal phenomena that include strange tappings or banging noises and feelings, such as a sense of being watched. Of course, there is always the possibility of worldly explanations of what people saw or smelt and responses to stimulus of random shadows and light can cause the brain to 
construct shapes, such as people or faces, that make sense to our minds. Do you think that Rotham Airfield is haunted? Or are you skeptical of these apparitions? Would you spend a night in the control tower? Tell us in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a like, comment, and share on social media.